Hi, this is Matt Maxwell, and I'm a product manager for the Tektronix RSA306 Real-Time Spectrum Analyzer. And with this short video, I'd like to talk a little bit more about interference hunting with the RSA306 Analyzer. And I'm gonna tune the analyzer to the ISM band and reduce the reference level so I can start to see signals. And the point here, the goal of this video is to show you how you might be able to look for signals of interest that happen infrequently. So I'm gonna enable a peak hold trace to show what you might see with a regular spectrum analyzer that's sweeping very quickly, uh, and then compare that to what I see with a DPX display. So doing a side-by-side -side comparison here, I'm gonna quickly adjust the colors a bit on the DPX display so I can get full use of the color spectrum there. And I see on the upper display DPX, I, can, um, I have colors that indicate how often sig signals are happening over time. There's more information about how DPX works in the real-time spectrum analyzer primer available on tech.com. But basically, each pixel represents a histogram where things that happen more frequently get a red color, like on a temperature scale, and things that happen less frequently get a blue or green dot on the temperature scale. So you can kind of get a sense of how signals are occurring over time. And over there you see, uh, as we're getting close to lunchtime on this recording, a microwave oven that's going on on the other side of the building here. It's a little bit far away, so it's not very high signal strength. But I have excellent sensitivity on the analyzer with a minus 160 dBm displayed average noise level to see those kinds of things from quite a distance with a small whip antenna that I have connected to the analyzer. If I stop this for a moment, let's say the next goal is, I assume this is the baseline, and I'm going to close the spectrum display. What I'd like to be able to do now is better search for signals of interest. So under tools, I have something called a mask test. So I want to see whenever trace one is outside of a mask, and I'm going to edit the limits here and automatically draw the mask with five megahertz margin and 5 dB margin around each of those points. So I can control the X and Y margin. Maybe I only want two megahertz and see what the mask looks like there, but this gives you a way to quickly draw a mask based on the present signal environment. So that's an automatic one. As you can see here, if I wanted to load a mask, I could do that. I could open one and if I had it saved offline, I could generate these per a table if I wanted to and load them in for some quick mask testing. So anyway, I have the mask drawn and now I enable the test and run the measurement. So what you'll see is when I'm running the measurement, anytime the mask area is broken, as indicated by the vertical red bars, I see that there's been a failure. When there's a violation of the mask, I could have it beep, which gets a little annoying, but I'll show that how that works here. And I'll turn the sound back off on my PC so you can see how that works. I could stop the measurement whenever there's a violation, or while I'm running, I could save the acquisition data, the underlying IQ data, for up to a second of data anytime there's a violation of that mask. I could simply save a trace, the spectrum trace when there's a mask violation, or I could save a picture, whatever format I'd like. Um, by the way, if I'm saving the acquisition data of the IQ file, the TIQ format is the packed binary format used by SignalView PC software. I may also want to use an ASCII format like a CSV or a .mat file for work with MATLAB software if I wanted to save signals like that. And I can limit the number of files that I wanted to save so as not to fill up a hard drive unnecessarily. I could put a cap on that or not depending on the situation and the space on the, uh, available on the hard drive. So this is a quick demonstration of the mass test capability to try to give you a better idea, and there's the microwave oven running again, try to give you a better idea of how the mask test can work for looking for interfering signals. Again, whether that's in a spectrum management application or a research and development application. I thank you for your time.